thank you, Cisco, and thank you for coming. I hope we do it well um, for you. And we were talking before coming here that we feel really privileged for doing this kind of work that we were uh, dreaming on it when we were in school to, to do this kind of projects. And, but also doing something like being here in your school, that it's really, really yeah, overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> and first I want to, to thank to Cisco and to Dean Addington for believing in us. And also to the 10 students, some of them are there, <laughs> <laughs> selecting us on the lottery. And really, we are really, really thankful for that. Um, I will start just a few minutes uh, explaining uh, where we come, why we are here. Uh, we um, met each other in Barcelona. We went there to study a master degree. We came for, from different backgrounds. We both study architecture in our countries, but were really different approaches to architecture and how. So in some moment we were working and uh, doing practice three, four years in other studios. Uh, Boris in a very big studio, I were in a smallest one. Um, uh, but we were practicing, trying to understand a little more that we didn't get on the school. It was really important. And Barcelona, I think Barcelona has a very good school of architecture, so we got very good uh, professors, no? professional professors there. So in one moment uh, we wanted to start doing our own projects or trying, but we were foreigners and so we didn't have this kind of connections, uh, family connections or something to, to make even a little project over there. We didn't have this opportunity. So we thought, what, why not try? to do a competition, because in Europe you have this possibility. It's, it's difficult to win one, but you have the possibility at least. Yeah? There's a lot of competitions, and uh, we did it. It was somehow on the limit of, the, of our possibilities, because we were working eight hours, having a family, and doing competitions were very difficult at the beginning. But uh, somehow, uh, 2005, we won a big one. And this Federico García Lorca Center in Granada. And so we won this competition, and we, it gave us the possibility to continue. It's, uh, it wasn't easy, it wasn't a fast way to arrive here because these buildings take, uh, this public buildings needs a long term for construct them, for build them. So Lorca, for example, took 10 years to be built. So you don't have 10 years, you don't have nothing to show. No? <laughs> Is this. So uh, we, from 2005, it was 13 years from here. So we are going to show you Four projects, all of them come from, from open competitions, open international competitions, and two of them are already built. Uh, this is here, and this is the last one. This is quite different environment and uh, context. Uh, this is Lorca that is in, in Granada, it's in the old uh, historic center of the city. This one is the uh, missing Sarlacius in Finland. There is a uh, more natural or uh, uh, it's in the middle of a garden and in front of it's more natural environment. This is the concealer museum in Norway. These two are already built. This is a competition that it's a um, design process right now. It's another museum but it's in the middle of a similar structure. And this is the Papalote Children's Museum that is in Mexico City, in Zapalapa, and it's right now it's being built. Is that correct? Okay. <laughs> 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 um, so for me, I'm going to present 
the Garcia Lorca. This is uh, the project that I was involved from these four projects. Forty two percent the rest. We were always because we were on this um, learning process and also because we didn't have a big studio. Uh, we, uh, we were always uh, working with other people, making teams from four. Also, this one were for five or six architects working, main architects working on the competition. So I'm on the first one with Boris, another two, two friends that were working at Colamara. And the rest has other teams that Boris will talk about that later. Okay. So I will start uh, with Lorca. Uh, I don't know if, if you know who was Lorca. This is 1926. This is Federico Garza Lorca. This is Buñuel, the film director. And this is Dali. This one is Dali. So Lorca was a writer, theater writer, poet, thinker. He was also a painter, a drawing. He was an intellectual. But it was uh, really, really on the avant-garde of the thing uh, before, the, before Franco arrived, the dictator, to Spain. So uh, 10 years later, and we're going to talk now about his work, but 10 years later of this photograph, he was killed by the militars. Uh, he born in Granada, in Andalusia, the south uh, from Spain. And it was, he was killed because he was because the way he thinks, he was against the dictator, of course, the way against the militars, but also because he was gay, also because a lot of things he was killed. And it, it was a uh, uh, cicatrice, uh, herida? Uh, a wound. Oof, that's a wound. <laughs> <laughs> that is in the city, really, really, the city, and it's about the history. So when we started doing this competition, we knew that we were going to. To, to understood this dimension of this of this person, you know, that is for, for the culture, for the Spanish culture. So uh, this is Granada. Granada was built by the uh, Muslims in the 11th century, yes. So on the 15th century, the Castilla, the, the kings from Spain. <laughs> They, they get the city and they construct, this is the Muslim city, this is the Lambra. And then this one, like this is in a, in a hill, in two hills. And this one is the city that the Spanish uh, kingdom um, built around this Muslim city when they get it. So in this part you can find a lot, a lot of buildings that are really impressive. It's, a, it's like a museum city. This one is the, the cathedral, it's quite big, quite big cathedral. And the place that we were, that we were asking for the, for the new center for Lorca, for having his work, was over here, close to the cathedral, in the middle, all this history. Uh, this is, <coughs> the structure of this, of this kind of cities, are really connected to the plazas in front of the, of the old buildings, of the main buildings. There are somehow public buildings, like the cathedral could be. They open the doors eight hours and you can go inside. And so here there were uh, a place that people put their market in this square, in this plaza. It was historically, they, they used this space for, for putting a temporal market. It's really common in Granada to have these fruits and herbs in the street. So right now, in this century, they have a void. In this, they make this plaza, they make this another plaza, bigger voids in the center, they make it this plaza in front of the cathedral, bigger also. So you were, it, it's a very dense uh, structure, even a structure, but you find this gardens and these voids and we were going to work here because the the city gave this plot to the Fundacion Lorca, Lorca Foundation to make the new building. Okay. So uh, the first thing we saw is that 
they wanted a very representative building, about uh, 4,000 square meters, um, six storage, but very representative building with uh, 11 meters of facade, because we were in the, in the core of this place. Yeah. So it was really difficult to think how to put all this program, it was quite a difficult program, you will see, and doing it representative, you know? Doing it good for the photographs of the tourists and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, this was 2004, so this was the plot. You can see that some of these buildings were really, really old, and we knew we were we had to put some part of the program underground because we couldn't go outside this corner. So we only got this, this part to make a facade and to attract the people from the city to go inside. Yeah. Um, so the first thing, uh, well, not the first, but <laughs> one of the first good ideas, or the good approaches we made to the, to the place was to think about the proximity of the new cultural center to the cathedral. That this cultural center, in that moment, uh, and the museums were the new cathedrals from our century, more or less. No? So we made this analogy. We are doing some kind of cathedral in the 20th century. And, uh, and in the same way that Giambattista Noli wrote Roma, in the 18th century, the open space of the um, public space from Roma, he drew it uh, with all the first, the ground floor of the public buildings open. You see, so he drew the these ground floors like part of the public space. So it, it, it for us this really gets sense on how we walk the city. So we wrote the same way. <laughs> okay, I'm talking too much. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> okay, so this is the way we we <laughs> we we did the same, and we wanted this place, this new place, to be understood like this, like an open space, and also part of the streets, part of the. Of the, of the path from the people from the city. We also see how these buildings, these cathedrals were done, uh, and they were working with the stone, but a really, you know, really fine way they, they build this, this construct, this, these columns and this, all these elements. And we wanted to do also that, but with a view from the 21st century. So we, we use uh, concrete. Uh, concrete. So we were thinking to use concrete, but like uh, artificial stone, and in a very nice way like they do. Okay. So you can see another thing we we shared is that cathedral was not just close to our plot, but also it was very very linked to our plot and to the plaza because of the power. It was always there, you always see the power, the big power. So in that way, we, um, we start thinking the plot, not just uh, what they gave us, but all together with the plaza, you know, the, the plot changed in one moment, all together with it, and also taking the, the tower because it's over there, it's part of the plaza and we wanted it to be part of the building. So we made these diagrams uh, thinking how to, to connect all these three things together and we, we saw that we have to do something on this point. Yeah. So this is the way we believe it, that, oh, sorry, that the ground floor, the connection with the plaza has to be fluent until the next uh, passage street. and the next street. And also, we think, okay, we are talking about Lorca, and Lorca is a universal, <coughs> universal poet, writer, but he was also talking a lot about the people from Granada. He was talking about 
the sedans we were talking about this this very small not not about the privileges no so we wanted to give the main part of the program that was the auditorium the theater to give it to the street and give it to the city that that the way we we understood the work of Lorca. So the way that we could uh, leave all the, all the ground floor without a structure was to put all the main structure on the perimeter. So we put all of, all of it, we divide the plot into buildings, into volumes, as you can see there, and that, that are connected in the middle, and all the structures in the, in the perimeter. So this, oh, the ground floor works like this, that you can open all the, the doors that we have for the auditorium, the main, uh, the two staircase we needed are on the perimeter too, and also the bar is open to the plaza, everything is self-fluent, and we were thinking uh, some other ways that uh, the, fund the foundation could use this space because we think the auditorium like part of a topography, a ground floor with a topography. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the, all these chairs can be retractable, and you can use the ground floor in different ways. Also on the top, this was the ground floor, but on the top we wanted to, <laughs> sorry, we wanted to connect the grid from the top with the grid of the, of the city. So we were thinking about the program who will be there and we wanted to use these patios also to connect with the city. You can see the tower here. We made this connection with el this element with two bridges that connect the two volumes in this way and continue the main facade here. So the program comes uh, the auditorium, that is here on the ground floor. We have here uh, workshops, and the program that is uh, with a small scale, that is more domestic, are the offices that are outside. So we, we went from, oh, okay, and the exhibition area, and it's here. So we went from the big scale to the small scale, to connect with the dwelling that was around. On the other volume, we have uh, the um, li um, library, yes, a library, uh, an archive, and you can see we were also trying to put, because it was like a hole, like a hole, we were putting uh, the, um, the light from outside to downside all the time, thinking on the light. This section, you can see again the scale, the bigger scale, and the smaller scale, and how the lights come <coughs> down into the exhibition area, and also in some patios, and also connecting with the city, etc. It has a lot of, it's a project, a very complex project that has a lot of layers. It's more or less. This is the construction <coughs> part, it's very difficult, very, very difficult. It's this is before drones, <laughs> not so spectacular, but it's, you can see it's difficult, but it's where on this, on this, uh, on the obra? Sorry. Yeah, I, w I was director of the yeah. construction side. Um, yeah, director of the construction side, and it's, it's really amazing the work we have to do here. You can see here now the appears, okay, the, the concrete is growing here, everything is done. In, in the, the place, okay, and here the other place, okay, and here the result. So we were shaping a void. We say that we were, we were, we decided not to do a facade, but shape a void that connects people until the inside. We were really looking at what, how to connect with the old buildings and making some kind of joints all the time and working with the, with the shadows that comes inside and, uh, you know, at the time this window looks into the tower too. Um, sorry. Well, it's kind of some kind of details that we had to do to make all these big doors. You know, this, is, this is the door, open door from the auditorium. 
And also you can see here, I want to show you the concrete, how we work with the concrete with like a artificial stone with a very a specific design and all these elements of these windows that were connected one side with the other one all the time. Um, so are the, the lights that come from the, this are one of the bridges and the light that comes, this is one part of the light that goes onto the exhibition area and this long facade that is connected with the plaza. This is with the open auditorium, more or less what we do. This is open windows also and I told you that the, the, the structure doesn't touch the ground until it is in the perimeter. So the, you have these elements like a cantilever So the light that it's falling down and, and touch this all these very tiny textures. <coughs> this is outside the main element that is connecting both uh, volumes. And you can see here, for example, there appear some other uh, windows that where you can see the the old facades that comes here that are very close. Here, this is space that we are always, always connecting uh, with what we have on the other side. It was really important for us. This is the back side, the back facade. Also, making this kind of movements that, to make a different experience uh, on this place. And, and you can see this is open, and uh, this is really <laughs> the idea. Okay, this is just another layer that it's uh, the, the staircase that was sculptured like uh, with, the, with the concrete, all the elements, um, things like this uh, handrail that we were we were really we were really working on the details and trying to solve it. We learn a lot, <laughs> a lot. This is something that we like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And this is the exhibition area when you arrive on the ground floor. And well, it's connected to the to the staircase. Sometimes the staircase is closed, sometimes it's open. And also you can see here this patio that take the, the light and this is from this passage that is outside that comes the light because we were in Granada, it's Mediterranean, it's more with than here, so you can get the light from the vertical light, <laughs> it's very strong. This is a library that has a suspended uh, element that has all the work from Lorca. It's inside contained. And also in the poster. This is one of the windows in the, in the library. This is one of the bridges. Um, and this is finally the offices. It's a very domestic. Uh, way uh, this can you see this is a patio in the middle we, they have here they have their uh, curtains uh, here when they need to make light but you can see over there is the center of the block with all this main and old buildings that, that make this small texture that is very very different from what you see from the plaza and we well, we're already thinking of this and this is what you see from the windows, from the office. Now you, you get this, this touch from the concrete and from this small scale that we wanted to, to give to the people who were visiting or working on the building. I got 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So I, I will continue with uh, other three projects a little bit faster. <laughs> uh, so I will present uh, uh, for this uh, Bosta Museum extension, which is not extension, it's actually the museum, the main museum in, in Manta and Finland. And uh, at that time it was, when we did this competition, it was the biggest competition in Finnish history. So we, when we knew that 
it was like 600, almost 600 proposals arrived. We said, well, we just, we don't have any chance to win it. And then there was a call from the client and say, well, we will be in Barcelona on Saturday, on Sunday. We want to visit you to see if you have really an office. <laughs> <laughs> because you won a competition. <laughs> so we, we, we did this competition somewhere in the middle of this lake landscape in, in the south of the Finland. It's a, it's a competition for the museum of the Shellakius Foundation, which is the family that uh, grew up with the uh, paper mill industry, uh, the most important paper mill industry in, in the Europe. And uh, the foundation somehow, it's, it's like a child of this uh, man who did all this uh, industry in, in the Finland. And uh, somehow they, are grow, they grow and they need a new space for, for the museum. And uh, the museum started in, uh, in Manor House, which was uh, the official residence of, of uh, Shalakius uh, family. And it was designed at, uh, in years of uh, thir uh, 1930, uh, also with, with a part that surrounds it, which was made by landscape uh, architects uh, from Great Britain at that time. And it's in the middle of nowhere at that time. So there was no big roads there. It was just like a, a paradise in the middle of the woods. So it was kind of a bucolic landscape. And uh, they asked to build a a big museum on this, and the museum should be like four times bigger than this house, and shouldn't destroy this bucolic landscape. So it was like a challenge, and uh, uh, we somehow um, tried to, to work really hard on where to put and how to put this museum that we didn't want to hide it, because to build an architecture that is underground, it's also quite Mm, at that time it was not an option because the client wanted the museum that would be somehow representative for them and for the new era that they were they were going with their with their expositions. Uh, so we studied a lot of sites and did a lot of proposal and at the end we found that the best way it would be to build the museum just no. No? This one. Ah. so if this is the manor house uh, to build a museum just behind the manor house because it's kind of this classical landscape plan that you have kind of one axis, another axis, and access is by this axis. So we studied and analyzed the site quite carefully so to somehow maintain the access from the parking to that you see for the manor house when you go to the courtyard, then it opens the view to the, to the new museum and to the entrance. And also we tried to maintain all the important views in the landscape. So it was kind of uh, very uh, careful planning how to, how to put this building inside this beautiful landscape. So this is more or less uh, the situation, how we did it. And somehow the view that where you see that the main entrance is so, so important that somehow guides the, the visitors towards the new building, even if the new building is behind the old building. And uh, somehow this part, it was more inside the woods, so all this part that is most, most beautiful of the park, in front of it, is, it was remained uh, as intact. Uh, we tried to, to work on this museum like a continuous platform, exhibition platform, that is somehow parallel to the main axis of the landscape right. composition with a, with a manor house as a principal element that somehow reigns all the sides. And the new building should be somehow in dialogue with this manor house without uh, getting uh, too much attention. So the manor house is still the master right. of the composition. Uh, in this way, we tried to somehow cut these buildings with this kind of insert semi-patios, also to have that somehow this beautiful landscape somehow enters inside this exhibition space, and also to divide this building to, to two parts. There, this is a bridge to maintain this kind of axis. That this is quite important pathway that goes to the other side of the park. 
uh, the building is inside the, the woods on the other side and uh, you see this, this kind of cuts so we try to make kind of material distance between the main skin which is from, from wood and these cuts which are from glass, uh, glass facade okay. with, reflective, uh, with reflective glass which has all these kind of UV filters that needs museum and it makes this kind of kaleidoscope uh, experience when you are inside of this kind of semi patio with this uh, this uh, kind of angled geometry. Uh, we try to also align quite carefully to the topography. So if this is the manor house, we try that the manor house is still the highest building in, in this area and the, the entrance, even if it's very big, it's the lowest part of the building that you actually see when you approach to the manor house. And that the, the biggest part of the building with the highest exhibition area, it's far away from the manor house and next to the, next to the lake where the, the topography already goes down. So you see here we position the big hall and this is more or less all the, this exhibition area <coughs> and downstairs are the offices. Mm -hmm. uh, the facade is somehow the, this continuous rhythm of the wood that somehow uh, dialogues with the landscape. And uh, we try to fill the gaps between these mullions uh, with, uh, with slightly curved uh, planks, wooden planks, that make this kind of shadow play on the facade. And uh, this is somehow the, the way that, that we try to approach with the wood to the landscape, because with these pines, the, the, the trunk of the pine, it has kind of reddish color, so we try to put a little bit like a reddish varnish on, on the wood, without losing the, the texture, the original texture of the wood. Uh, this is somehow the, the access, where we, we, I will just now guide you through somehow to the museum, uh, where you come, you find this, this kind of piece, only this piece of the museum, you don't see the whole building, it's very difficult to see one, the whole building, this is also kind of strategy to not see this big object, but somehow to, to see it in different pieces. Uh, then we have here the reception and all the service area that is somehow designed like box in the box. We again we try to control and design almost till the last element, even working with other graphic designer like this, for example, this kind of wave fighting things. This is the bridge that then connects from the foyer. To the, to the other part of the building and when you start having these views to the park. So the idea was that somehow you wave between the exhibition spaces and this waypoint or way, way that somehow guides you through, through the landscape to the last exhibition area. Uh, after the bridge, it opens downstairs to the restaurant, which is also an important part of the museum because they they have a lot of guests that go there for the weekends and they stay there the whole day having a nice lunch and seeing car exhibitions. And then this uh, path leads you through this kind of pathway next to the exhibition areas uh, where the main space element is actually the structure, which are this kind of wooden structural frames, so all the wooden structure from inside is visible. And between these wooden beams or columns that are very thin, it opens towards this view to this beautiful park outside. Also this kind of cut patio, semi patio house with this kind of reflection inside this UV, UV protected glass gives you kind of this sensation that the outside is green, intensive areas just blushing inside the museum. Uh, at the end, the pathway starts, walkways st 
stops at this balcony and then you go down by the staircase to the big exposition exhibition area and this is the, the main hall which it's one of the biggest exhibition area in Finland and it can hold the biggest art of work, the modern so the, they really want kind of a flexibility uh, so they can present whatever artists, uh, contemporary artists uh, they, they, they want to present inside this environment um, here it's a little bit more about the, the structure this is all the wooden structure, the main wooden structure which is put over the concrete base because the wood cannot be in direct contact with the earth. Uh, it's everything is made with uh, with a glue lamp, beams and columns, which were prefabricated during the winter during due to the harsh condition in Finland. So uh, they were um, all the holes for for the joints were made in the in the factory and they were also painted. So when the spring came, they just put everything together like a Lego. And uh, this is a facade system, which is actually quite simple. It's just sandwich panels and then the glue lamp wooden mullions with these wooden planks. And we try to control all these small details that even if you have this harsh condition with triple glazing windows, that the frame goes behind the column and you don't see it and uh, all these kind of details how these planks are fixed and we somehow turned it around to make more more texture intense and also to hide somehow the uh, the screw that fix this uh, um, plank to the to the to the wooden profile uh, we tried also quite hard to mm -hmm. to get uh, the right color for the facade um, without losing the aspect of wood and uh, we tried first with traditional Finnish paint that they paint their buildings from you know, with it already 500 years and when it was tested in laboratory it turns out that it's really the worst paint for, for buildings because it burns out completely <laughs> so we had to then find another product and finally after I don't know 10 or 20 kind of testing to find this, this color uh, and we tried the, the color somehow it's not very intensive because through the time it, the, change, the wood will change the color and it became more and more gray and with this kind of silky finish these are the, the harsh condition of constructing the building by minus 20 degrees Celsius <laughs> in the winter <laughs> working there and well this is a small project like the spin-off of, of this building it's it's a bridge that also the client asked us to to make a project for this small bridge that connects this island with with their park to somehow make the exhibition area bigger because they somehow uh, use all the park as, as their exhibition platform we, we designed a bridge from Cortin steel that was built like one piece and brought from the north of the Finland to the south with this kind of very long truck and this is more or less the result and then just put like this on the landscape so the, the idea of a bridge was that because here it's like our original is a rock and here it's very low land so the, the bridge somehow comes from the low land and puts there it's head on, on the rock there and the, the railing somehow it's a bench it's con con converts inside in the bench in the middle so it's kind of very soft shape that somehow invites you to sit and talk in the middle of the bridge okay so we we go to other two projects that are not constructed uh, but somehow this is the project that uh, we are now somehow in development and it was made with, uh, with a team also of uh, 
one Norwegian architect that is uh, somehow like translator of all the norms and all the cultural things that are happening in Norway. So it, we are we we feel more secure with with uh, collaborating already from the from the competition stage with uh, somehow the, the local architect because in Europe you have all these kind of norms that are different from each country and then you have the language barrier so you always need somebody that it's a local architect because you cannot learn all the languages that are spoken in the Europe <laughs> and all the norms that exist in this uh, in this world so we we, we worked with uh, uh, with more architects on this on this competition that we won also, and uh, it's uh, actually the client here asked for two things. One was uh, to make a proposal uh, that somehow uh, make an urban development of this area around the silos to make it kind of uh, cultural district, make it somehow attractive for young people for public. Uh, because it will be kind of a detonant or, or high point of this new development that will be built here next to it. And uh, actually it's, it's an old port area of Christian Sand, which is the city here. And the Christian Sand is the city that is uh, on the south edge of the Norway. So it's uh, just on the on the on the corner on the south corner of the Norway, and like all these cities, all these cities that developed, somehow the old port area was too small, so they they put the port area somewhere else, and this port area they try to develop another part of the city because it's quite close to the to the center. So they they did a competition and quite a big and expensive building here, which is a Kilden. Uh, hidden cultural center which hosts opera, theater, and this kind of scenic arts. Uh, it was quite published building by other architects. And actually there was this silo building which is kind of the most iconic building of this port area. So they somehow they didn't want to tear it down. Even in the structure it's somehow quite incompatible with whatever use you want to use it because they are just <laughs> simple concrete tubes <laughs> that you pour the grain on the top and you take it out at the bottom so it's quite difficult to convert it to the other building uh, it was quite important silo building at the time even the Corbusier and one of his writings said well it's one of these kind of industrial building that it's well proportioned because it has these three volumes and so on and uh, but then it got some additions. At the end, it was getting bigger, and this is actually today, the stage of today, which is quite an abandoned building. And uh, from the urban perspective, uh, we try to somehow make this kind of small plazas or courtyards that are somehow integrated inside this this kind of structure. So we proposed actually, if this is the existing silo, to make a small addition, well, uh, not very small, but addition at the end, and somehow push it a little bit there. And with this kind of very simple move, we generated two plazas. One in the front, which is kind of sea promenade, and one of the back, which this back is also protected from the wind, because they have quite a big problem with wind blowing directly from the sea. Uh, this is the whole area. We have here, this is the museum, the cultural school with uh, scenic arts and some hotel or office buildings at the back. And this plaza also opens with kind of staircases towards this Chanel water car. Um, the, the wish of the client or the competition was that the ground floor of this kind of public building somehow connects very well with surrounding, which is kind of somehow our team <laughs> that we somehow like it. So we 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 try to open this museum with many doors, which is not quite usual, but it has kind of three entrances and somehow the ground floor it's kind of continuation after outside inside space and there is a lot of public functions inside the, the ground floor. 
also we try to position all the main auditoriums, all the halls in this culture, in this cultural schools, a music school that is uh, next to it. Try to do this kind of plaza with this kind of very different heights. Uh, we, we try also to put some restaurant or event space on the top, like a highlight of, of all this area. And uh, the other thing that we have to resolve is what to do <coughs> with the silo. So we tried really hard. I think we had like 15 proposals and none of them worked. And at the end, we were like tired and said, well, I don't know, maybe we just empty it completely and well, it's just a facade and it's kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but then somehow we, we found that maybe if we cut it to the half and maintain all the top structure and to empty almost everything on the bottom, uh, maintaining some half tubes like a, a column, you know, even a curved wall, like a a structural element and having this kind of big um, atrium in the middle where you always can relate with this structure upside looking it down so it's only present in this in this space we can somehow maintain and even give expression of this existing structure to the new museum um, so this is more or less taxonometric use of the floor plans. Hmm? <laughs> 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 my, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we 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 did well. This is the the, the exhibition <laughs> areas. They somehow organized around this central atrium space in three stories. Then we have the office area and on the top this event restaurant space. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, not so quick. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we tried also to make this kind of uh, circulation that you have kind of vertical core and then you somehow move around this patio through these exhibitions and somehow make a logical way of how to visit this museum and that always when you go around you have this kind of views about this ceiling and with these great tubes with some of them with strong illumination going down. This is when, when you look up. You now this is actually a second phase competition model that we constructed it just to make photos. And then on the top this kind of spectacular uh, event space with this kind of round shaped balconies around the, the central space. Uh, the last, yeah, the last I mean. project <laughs> I think I mean. it's, uh, it's actually built now in, in Ciudad de Mexico. It was also open competition. It was like every Mexican office participated more or less because this was kind of national prize. It was one of the, the most important public building that is built in, in Mexico City in the last 10 years. And somehow we won it also. <laughs> and uh, here we also had to deal with two issues. One was the urban aspect because it's a it's a museum and the public building which was built in Ixtapalapa uh, district of Mexico City, which is very difficult district, very harsh district where a lot of not so nice things happen and uh, also the surrounding of the museum is very very harsh not very nice and uh, there is a big avenue next to the museum uh, so we have to somehow resolve this urban aspect and which is going more and more uh, it's getting more and more important for Mexico City because there was a lot of this intent of of somehow politicians or, or investors to somehow get over to the public space that is maintained in the, in the city. So we actually proposed kind of very public and open building somehow to contrast this kind of 
of current currents that was going into the other direction. And the other thing was that we had to somehow find a structure, quite it's an impressive structure, that itself it will be enough strong to somehow define the, the space of the museum. So we combine these two, two, two demands or two demands of the competition brief in this solution that uh, the first one was somehow uh, to make this kind of green plaza, a green park, and uh, kind of typical way of doing this in Mexico was making kind of a building and then putting a, a green patio or park inside the building. And somehow this makes this park quite private in a way mm. that doesn't communicate mm. with the city. Mm. The other that is more mm. modern, we can see it in some other public buildings now in Mexico, is to put a green on the roof. But also it's kind of far away, so actually not a lot of people would get to this park and it would get somehow private. So we opted for uh, the third idea that would be somehow like hanging gardens uh, that somehow impregnates the whole area. So the, the park is everything, let's say. Why can we do the, the building that somehow it's so open that you don't know where it's outside, where it's inside. Um, so this is this museum that is somehow the same structure repeated like 10 or 9 times next to this block of shopping center that is built next to it. And we opted for this kind of frames, you know, frames, concrete frames that has kind of do with this, con this uh, umbrella structure that is quite present in, in the 60s in Mexican architecture and we try somehow to make a mix between maybe Kimball Museum and Mexican architecture <laughs> <laughs> so to extend this umbrella <laughs> in other direction and to make it more playful no? so we try to, to get kind of these openings between these walls and make kind of forest out of these walls so that the children somehow will just go through this like in playful manner and these kind of umbrellas could, could somehow host the terrace inside. So this is kind of problematic diagram that we have this plaza in, in front of it and with this kind of walls that you some, somehow go in between them like you lost inside the forest like in Labyrinth and then you have this section that somehow also opens to the other side and you have this kind of playful section where you have these spaces, the sample continues up to the two terraces. Uh, this is then a competition plan for, for the second phase, where you see that the, the actually you don't see where the plaza ends or and so actually it goes to all the to all the floor plan in the end. Actually there is only a parking space at the end, but you don't see where it's inside, outside, no, at least from the top plan. Uh, this is already the, the final project with these walls that got a little bit thicker, but not too much <laughs> <laughs> because we are in earthquake area. <laughs> and uh, it somehow we, we maintain the idea. No? So this is the plaza with these elements, which are quite sculptoric, the structural elements that make this kind of entrance that you somehow, at the end, you see the staircases going up and then you have all these floors with 3D Max, cinema, multi-hall, uh, workshops, and then two floors of exhibition areas that somehow organized around this empty space where the staircases are uh, placed, like a hanging sculpture that somehow goes around these walls. And some also then these exhibition spaces opens to this very big terraces on, on other spaces on the on the edges of the of the museum. So this children's museum with this kind of uh, experimental things and they also try that these terraces will be kind of pedagogical thing where you can plan the things and you do some gardening or whatever. 
and these kind of very big structural elements hanging on, on the top of it. While these are more floors. And this is like a section no, through all this kind of playful playfulness of this structure that permits that kind of simple structure with the walls and this V-shape roof and the communication that you can get through this, all these spaces that somehow impregnates all this museum. And also the trees somehow. We, we tried also that the atrium is kind of a uh, garden in the shade, which is kind of also Mexican element for, for the public buildings. Uh, this is the final project. We have to do this <laughs> floating <laughs> Strange. <laughs> strange basement that is needed in, in Mexico City that because the building is somehow floating. This is kind of floating space that doesn't sunk into the mud of Mexico City. And this is the, the view of this kind of central space with very high walls, like 25 meters, 30 meters high very high ceilings <coughs> and um, the main facade we tried also to to get all the water from these roofs like using them like a water collectors because of the problem that has Mexico City with the water and to to get all this water inside and clean it and then use it for all these green terraces around and for the trees <coughs> And that's more or less the project that we did in last year. <laughs> Thank you very much for... Now it's just a few minutes after six. If you have a class or something, you need to go. Please do that quickly. But if you'll take a few questions... Uh, yes, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, you Angles. Yeah, like, I don't know, it's not very like orthogonal, so I was wondering how you kind of make sure they don't interfere with each other, or how you kind of make sure they all yeah. fit into the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say, well, it depends. Oh, it's, let's say the first project that Monica showed you, the site was already quite angled, so <laughs> we, we, we somehow find that to use all the space that was inside the, the site that was given, uh, we have like 20 different angles and uh, we somehow <coughs> try to sculpture at least to somehow correct volumes out of it. No? So you will find that usually in this kind of old city center, especially when they were building, they didn't use the tools that nowadays we are using. So they just built with the angles they, 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 they found. And anyhow, the Granada was built on on muslin kind of uh, uh, grid uh, that it's not orthogonal. And uh, all these angles, we try to, to work them quite hard, no? It's, it's not easy. Actually, you, you'll, you, you will, you need quite a lot of time that, uh, to think for all the details and how this angle goes to here, how it goes with another, the detail that is there and so on. So, it's uh, no, but the, it's the main elements are 90 degrees. I mean, for example, mm -hmm. yeah, you <laughs> 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 well, okay, if you see the auditorium, it, it is on a 90 degrees. These doors that is open on 90 degrees. Uh, the main um, staircase is on 90 degrees. So we try to play with the the other intersections on the spaces like the foyer, like the like the bar, all these spaces that has uh, a more smaller um, furniture, for example, that you can fit on it. So uh, we work we work with these angles, but we we are also always <coughs> thinking that the spaces have to be 
rationally use it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can put a desk over there and you don't have a corner over there that no one will clean. Mm -hmm. no? it's, you have to, to be very careful on this. Yeah, you, if you use, yeah, if, yeah, if you use the angles, you, you have to resolve them, no? It's, it's, yeah. it's much easier to use to 90 degrees when it's, when, when it's possible and when you think it's okay for your architecture. But uh, if you use the angles, then you have to resolve them, no? It's kind of elements, even, even this angle, we have to resolve how to put the elevator here inside. Because of this small angle, and we had to somehow comply with this three meter distance from the neighbor, and so on. So, um, especially in this kind of environment, it's you have to know how to do it and uh, just work on them. Mm -hmm. Are there certain elements that I think that you use that kind of help resolve them? Because it seems like with a lot of the walls, they kind of change thicknesses. Do you think that kind of helps, like? Uh, well, you you can. There is a whole bunch of tools you can you can use. No, it's there is no uh, there is no just one specific recipe for everything. But of course, there's it, let's say this building was was detailed like like a furniture, not like a big furniture. There were like I don't know two thousand details just for this building. No? And uh, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of technology inside because you have the whole equipment, the theater the fireproof doors that close automatically and all these kinds of small fittings that we have to somehow fit together that at the end you don't look it doesn't look like a, a motor of the car no? when you go inside that somehow you still see the architecture and the expression of the materiality and the main element and not all the installation that have to be in the, inside this building so we try it's not just an angle it's angle is just part of it but it's, <laughs> It's, a, it's not a big problem, anyhow. <laughs> the big problem is all the rest. <laughs> Another question? Actually, maybe to dovetail off of that, can you guys talk a little bit about your uh, thoughts on structure? Because, I mean, I think you go through a lot of gymnastics in order to produce a lot of, a lot of these. And in, in the sense that structure, you, you briefly talked about it in I'll the project honest, yeah. in Finland. No, 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 the, 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 how you, how you con uh -huh. conceptualize structure mm -hmm. in these buildings, right? Because, like, for example, mm -hmm. you know, the project in, in Norway, you're, you're taking off, right? Removing mm -hmm. all this structure. Mm -hmm. um, is, it al is it always come to you like a, is it, it's like a, is a problem that can be resolved through engineering? Mm -hmm. Or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, we usually, the structure is always somehow a part of the proposal. No? So um, here this diagram that Monica showed you that we have two volumes and one hangs on the other with the shoulder and the other with the other shoulder. It was this one, yeah, this was part of already the competition. So we, we did, phase. we did this, uh, no, the se this was the second, second phase, phase, yeah. yeah. Just, so somehow we tried to think how to get Rid of the columns in the in the ground floor, and we saw that one possibility was would be that using the walls like a big beams mm -hmm. that somehow make this kind of grid that holds all everything over the ground floor. Mm -hmm. And in in Finland, well, we we somehow mm, wanted to do some experiment with the wood because um, we we use wooden structure, uh, concrete structure, metal structure, so we somehow always try to push also the limits of the structure that we are using, no? but somehow the structure is it's present in, the, in, the, in our project and we try to always that it's somehow visible. No? Here, here actually the structure is the facade, no? so even the, this concrete it's specially made with kind of marble ingredients and sandblasted and so on and so on but you see the structure of the building, there is no light. And in the Finland project, inside you see all the wooden structure. Even if we had to do the full ceiling between the frames, it's a slightly behind, so you don't, we didn't cover all the beams, uh, the wooden beams and so on. So we, we tried that the structure is somehow always present in, yeah. in our projects and it's like the rhythm, that gives the rhythm to the whole project.
Yeah, I, I was remembering that on the first phase of this competition, uh, we didn't explain how the structure worked. But because we didn't think that we will be on the second phase. <laughs> <laughs> so we not only one, we were four at the end. And I remember we went with the structurist and said, okay, we, we thought this could work like this. Do you think it could work? Yeah. And it was okay and it, 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 it could fit this idea. No? Mm -hmm. But after that, we really, really, when, when you go to a competition, you have to think that you could win. <laughs> and then it's a possibility. <laughs> and you have to give the face to the people to reply. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you have, you have to be sure and to be argue, argue, have arguments for what you are drawing over there. Okay. okay maybe one last. Sure, I, I was just going to follow the question about structure. Like the work of the game is miraculous, it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. The work is really interesting. I, I was seeing the building in Finland, the, the one that's complete, uh, as different than the mm -hmm. others. And, and that it seemed like the s structure was um, used very dexterously in all, all of the other work. Mm -hmm. But in that work, it's very present, but then it seems like the plan is interrupting the structure. And, you, and there's some, I don't know it well enough, but it, my memory, yeah. correctly, it's, it's interrupting it in ways that are unexpected. Mm -hmm. Themes are unsupported on one side, or, or seemingly unsupported. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if, if that was a consequence of working with, with wood, or if that's a misunderstanding, or if you see the structural solution as mm -hmm. somehow quite different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, there was two things in Finland. No? One was that um, we actually thought at the beginning when we were doing the competition that maybe the wood can be also, the structural wood can be somehow present outside. No? And uh, uh, actually due to the harsh condition, you have to also do kind of cut between the structure and the facade. So you have to put isolation in between and all the stuff. And we tried uh, to maintain this rhythm then with bullions on the facade, even if we couldn't bring the columns to be visible on the facade. And uh, we tried uh, all, these, all these beams actually held the column. It's, well, almost, no? Except <laughs> here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, more or less, we tried, we tried, we tried to, to respect the system. No, even here, this beam goes to the column. No, it's not completely 100% uh, respectful. That's true. Yeah. It just seems different. It? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Monica Thor, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.